Well, here I am, good old Dark Creepin, distant cousin of the doctor you know and love. Now I got a little story to tell you. So draw around the campfire, because it goes something like this. Ah, uh, people always come around to ask the same questions, wanting to understand something about the missing Shreveport girl. Some kind of fools always want a new angle, a new lead. But no matter how many times you tell people the story, that's all it remains to people. And it should be something more. But people are not listening for a warning, right? You want to know about her. They want to know about the River Witch, eh? All right, if you feel you need to know, then I guess you need to know. It's a funny thing how knowing such things and believing such things don't always go hand in hand. Now, I'll tell you all I know and all I believe, but no matter what you end up thinking or believing, know that it won't change a thing. She's real. Damn real. Well, where to start this thing? Yeah, the dip. It was at the restaurant. That's where I first saw her. That's where she met the devil. The restaurant was just so in name, you see. Nothing more than a shanty open bar near the riverside where good old boys stop in for some good home-cooked meals. The place was always crowded with the trucks and boats on either side. An old lady by the name of Nina worked it with her two sons, Ray and Thomas. They called it the Midnight Dip. It was over in Southern Plaque Mines Parish. Yeah, it was a happy place. Good food, good people, good times. Yeah, it had its share of fights or incidents, but nothing more than dumb drunks or angry wives looking for their men. <laughs> ah, good times. Well, getting back to it. Um, it happened in July, roughly two years ago. Madison, one of the new fellows working on the pipeline, he came by with his wife-to-be. Myra was her name. Nice girl. Come out of Shreveport, if I remember correctly. Well, she took sweet on Madison since he wasn't from around the local parts. He come from up north, Montana, you see. Anywho, when the pipeline was brought down through these parts, she left Shreveport and moved to New Orleans to be closer. She come down on every other weekend to spend time with him. A real sweet thing they had. Uh, it was what my mother would have called a glass romance, though. Wasn't long to last under any kind of pressure. Mm, the smell of barbecue was strong in the air that evening. The stars were shining sweet and the gumbo was just about done. Cold beer sit in the cooler. Yeah, it was to be a good night. A normal night. Some of the boys were going to launch a few fireworks of their own on the far side of the riverbank. Going to be a hell of a show, I thought. <laughs> Drunk some fireworks, you know. Well, it was about nine or so, and the fresh catfish was just coming off the grill. We had a dartboard getting set up on the side of a tree. Went to throw the first round when I got a rude interruption. There was a woman screaming, cutting over all the noise of the night. Scared the hell out of me, I'll tell you. It sounded something painful. And turns out, it was. You see, that sweet girl Myra had gone to the truck to get something or other and found the Madison fella getting real intimate with a local bush named Jesse. Well, it broke her heart on the spot. Poor thing. She ran right down onto the road, into the dark. Madison ran down after her, spouting a heap of lies about how his uh, carnal intentions with another woman wasn't what it seemed, <laughs> all the while struggling to get his pants back on. Soon he was lost into the darkness of the road, too. Madison came back around an hour later and got his truck. Didn't say anything, just got the truck and left. Well, another hour or so passes and he comes on down again to get a beer, Nina wouldn't serve him. 
as he took a nasty lip with her. Not that he needed it. I mean, the man came in smelling like race car fuel. He jumped in his truck and passed out before he even got the keys in. Much for the better, we thought. No need driving that drunk around here. Could end up in the river, dark waters. Nothing would find you there. Oh, nothing good, anyways. Around the tip of 1 a.m., Nina and her boy started getting the place cleaned up and ready for clothes. Lights were going off and plates were going up. I remember finishing off my bit of beer and fish as we got ready to leave. Left my tip, got my stuff for the boat right home with my buddy Ren. As I walked outside, I saw something, saw something staggering just out of the corner of my eye down the road. It was a dirty, sloppy mess of rags. The damn thing looked like it had just walked right up out of the river. Mud, moss all over. As it got a bit closer, I saw it was that Myra girl. Ah, oh, what a nasty mess she was. I tell you, it was like she'd walked through mud, sewage, and a jungle all at once. Well, I ran over to her as best as a lick it up old man could. I called out to Nina and Red. The two boys, Ray and Thomas, came first. They saw how she was and picked her up and brought her inside into the cabin. Nina brought out some warm towels and a clean blanket. Red and I just sat at the bar and watched, doing our best to stay out of the way. Yeah, I was damn near frozen from what they said. Took about a good twenty minutes or so, but they got her warmed up and covered. She wasn't saying a word at first, but Nina got her talking a little bit, and then a lot. A lot of it was cursing, mind you, mainly about that Madison fella. When she calmed down again, she told Nina something horrid. Oh, she started crying again, softer this time. She started telling Nina about how she was walking down the road. Madison came up on behind her, started to gag her and beat her. It's hard to make out through the tears, but I think she said that Jesse girl was with him. Yeah, she said that after the beating, Madison dragged her by the hair to some place cold and wet. Some place evil. She actually said the word evil. Well, back then I didn't know how you could tell that some place was evil. So we all learned fast soon enough. She said she couldn't remember more than that. After that, she just broke down again, inside this time. You could just know it by looking at her. Oh, poor thing just sat there looking like a half-drowned cat. I remember Nina was cussing up a bit under her breath now. She went on about how she never liked that Madison man that she should have buckshot his rear the moment he walked up to the dip. Oh, I hate to be the guy who gets in another man's life, but if the girl was telling the truth, then Madison was a real deal scumbag who broke a pretty girl. Anyway, Red came back in and told me he'd call Sheriff Hornings. I got up to tell Nina that Red and I were heading out, as it was late and all, but as I got off the bar stool, I saw Myra get up, too. Well, it caught me off guard as it was so quick. I tell you, that girl's legs didn't push her up. It, it was like she was yanked up off of the floor. She started walking out right away, walking with a purpose. I called out to her, and she paid no attention. She just kept walking. One of Nina's boys, Ray, taking sweet on the girl and tried to see what was going on. She ignored him, too. When he tried to hold her hand, he pulled it back quick like something burned or shocked him. He fell to the ground with a cry of pain as he cradled his hand. She opened the back door and sat outside in the tall grass by the riverbank. She just sat there and didn't move or say anything. Damn, it was just creepy. I remember we took a look at Ray's hand. And it was red hot. His mama was putting an ice pack on it while his brother helped. Red was looking over and said he saw bite marks on the hand. 
Nina put Ray's hand to the light and noticed that he sure did have two small bite marks on him. Nina checked it out, and sure enough, there was something on him. It kind of looked like a weird snake bite. Just the fangs were too far apart, and there seemed to be two sets of them. Ray started to run hot water all over and said he felt sick. He said that his head was killing him. Thomas had asked me to get the first aid kit from the back of the bar. Well, I'd been there enough years to need it once or twice myself, so I knew my way around. As I poked on back behind the bar, I saw Myra still sitting in the tall grass. She had her head tilted up, talking to someone. I couldn't see who, though. Well, I tossed the kid over to Red and stepped out back again. And that's... Oh, that's when I saw him. He was tall. A good eight foot on him, at least. He stood there in the tall grass, talking to Myra. I did my best to put him together in my eyes. It was almost like my mind couldn't keep him in direct sight. It was like looking at a moving ink spot. It was all dark and wispy-like. I tell you, I, yeah, I know it's hard to believe, yeah, considering the drinking, but I tell you, I knew that what I was looking at wasn't something men were supposed to see. Not rightly, anyways. It was a deep feeling. Something inside was telling me to get away, to close my eyes. I don't know if it was instincts or something else, but I could feel the danger maybe even the evil. As I watched Myra talking to the thing, it raised its arm, I think, and wrapped a whole head in that same inky cloud, lifted her straight up. I thought it was choking her to death. I called out to her, at least I tried. You see, before I even opened my mouth, I was dropped to the mud with a brutal force. I couldn't move a muscle, I couldn't even scream hear the commotion inside the dip. Oh, they were helping young Ray with his arm. Nina was yelling, cursing, crying all the same time. Thomas was doing his best to help his brother and mother deal. From what I gathered, Ray had started going pale and cold. Red was yelling at me. He was asking me to come back inside. I wanted to say something, but it was useless. I was pinned down. I don't rightly know what happened, but I was sure that the devil thing outside had somehow done it to me. I managed to move my head a bit, and then just a bit more. Little by little, I was able to move again. As I finally managed to stand, I looked for the girl and that thing. I was equal parts relieved and terrified to not see either of them. I stumbled my way back into the restaurant and stared at Red for a solid minute or so while he asked me what was wrong. I couldn't say a word. I didn't know how to begin. My own internal debates as to what to say were cut short by an ugly, grinding sound booming outside. Red went out back first and he could hear them letting loose all sorts of curses. A horrible, deep wailing started to come from outside now. Thomas and Nina stayed focused on Ray, but the screaming was getting to them. This was a man scream, a terrified scream. Well, I thought it was Red at first, but he came back in with a face as pale as poor Ray's. He gave me one deep look, and I knew that he'd seen the devil outside as I had. Well, don't know what made me do it. Maybe part stupid, or just curious took a few steps toward the door. Red looked at me with a look that was pleading me not to go outside. He may even have been saying it too. I couldn't tell. I opened the door and saw a damn horrible sight. You see, in all the commotion, we'd forgotten about that bastard Madison. He was still outside, passed out in the truck. When I saw him, though, he was wide up, sober, terrified. Myra had him. Now you can all judge and spit in my story, but I tell you, that's what I saw. It just still seems so out of reach. Yet it was real. 
I know it. Myra was there with a nasty look in her eyes. It was a mix of a hungry gator and a scared deer. Well, that's the best I can describe it. Totally inhuman, really. She was still wearing the heavy blanket that Nina had draped over her. With one arm on the grill of the truck and feet digging into the mud, she was pulling Madison towards the river. Madison was trying his damnedest to break the windows or open the doors, and nothing worked. That same black garbage that I saw earlier, it was swimming all over the truck. He screamed, he cussed, he cried like a little kid. And I could do nothing but watch. I knew that Madison was going to have something bad happen to him, no matter what I did. Well, I tell you, I looked at Myra, and she seemed to be dripping with that blackness all over. It was that devil stuff. It was coming out of her ears, her eyes, her mouth, and her nose. It was covering the truck with more and more. Oh, that little Myra. She pulled the whole truck from the lot to the river without breaking stride. Myra, whatever it was inside her. The devil, I say. It had to be. And when I stared at her too long, she started to break up in my eyes. Just the devil thing before me. She wasn't part of the world anymore. No. She was lost. I just knew that, somehow. She got to the edge of the river. She let go of the truck. His front wheels were already in the water. She stepped back to the side and screamed out some crazy noise. Oh, it hurt all over just to hear it. I can't help but imagine it's what being inside a microwave must feel like. My head and arms Legs, all of it, felt like they were about to pop and burn. It was over quickly, though. Then she fell to the floor and started puking up gallons of that evil black stuff. I heard Madison calling out, crying for help. He'd finally broken a piece of the windshield and got his foot stuck. God, it was like watching a rabbit dog in a kennel. Then I heard the wailing noise again. The blackness swirling around the truck stopped and seemed to pour to the ground like water. It was dark out, and the stuff itself was darker than anything. But I tell you, I watched it drain all to the river. Myra was still just sitting there, bent over by the riverbank. More and more of that stuff just kept coming out of her. God, it was coming out like a dam had broken inside of her. And the wailing noise came back for a moment, and then faded. We could hear Madison calling out to Myra to help him. He was going on about how much he loved her, oh, and how she needed him. How he could help her and comfort her. And if she heard him, she didn't show any reaction at all. There was a big splash in the river. Madison noticed it too. He stopped his noise and looked straight ahead. It felt like hours had gone by while we stared at that river. And then it came out. The thing that finally killed Madison. It was a hand. Massive, though. It seemed to be made out of twigs, logs, mud and rock. It was twice the size of the truck. Oh, I tell you. It was like the skeleton of the river. Damn crazy it was. It clawed its way to the shore, and I could make out a long, nasty arm of sorts, trailing behind it. Well, Madison started to scream again, but not for long. The monstrosity of a hand reached the truck and grabbed it whole. I could see more of that black ink dripping from it. It happened so quickly, I couldn't even really believe what I was watching. It crushed the truck like a can. No way I could see Madison now. But I knew the man was dead. If he wasn't, then I hoped he'd die soon, just out of mercy. And the hand sank back into the river water as quickly as it had come. Myra was still there. 
bend over the river bank. And I'm not ashamed to say that I went nowhere near her. I'd seen enough to know that whatever she was dealing with wasn't for God-fearing men to interfere with. I kept watching her, though. She didn't move one bit. I kept watching her, though. She didn't move one bit. She had a stillness that was just so unnatural. Nothing about her moved, not even her hair. And just about that point, a strong wind was picking up. Now let me tell you, this was a whole other thing, this wind. Red was outside with me now. Didn't know how long he'd been at my side. I looked at him and saw he could tell this wind was something really bad, though. Really bad. A strange kind of bad. I could feel it. Not like a gust of cold wind across your face, but inside me. Oh, it was ugly, nasty stuff. It chilled me from the inside out. When it hit the river's edge, I saw it take form, or something like a form. I don't know exactly what it was I saw, but I felt like it watched me. These strange eyes kind of peering out from the dark. Yeah, I know it's hard to imagine, so it's even harder to talk about, but it was there, watching. Almost like a snake's eyes, I thought. It was just so hard to look at. It pulled more and more of that blackness to the river edge and started to suck it down into the water. Soon there was none of that stuff left on the muddy banks. As... Whatever it was started to pull itself to the waters. I saw Myra start to crack and crumble. Like dust in the wind. I'm telling you, it was surreal. It was nothing but a few seconds, and then she was gone. Nothing left of her. And then it was quiet again. No noise at all. Red damn near killed me when he put his hand on my back. My heart felt like it was stopping right there. I caught Thomas peeking through the back room windows to me. They both had the look that I must have been wearing. That look that says, we're not alone and we are afraid. I forced my legs to take me inside. Poor Nina. She sat there with her boy, Ray. I could tell by his face that he was gone. Glassy eyes and all. She cried about him for a good old while, well, as any mother would. When the sheriff showed up, we had, well, we had nothing to tell him. We all just sat there staring at each other. Well, the sheriff, he knew something that was up, but left it as a lover's quarrel and left. He said that if Myra or Madison showed up, to bring them by the station. We all nodded knowing well that we would never see that girl's face again. Or rather, we hoped we never would. He did his best to talk to Nina, but with her son dead on the floor, she had nothing to say. We told him he got a snake bite, well, best we could tell. Harrison looked at us, and he could tell another story was sitting there, but he let it be. Red and I decided to walk home that night instead of taking the river. I myself have never been back on the water since. Can't even eat fish now, you know. Nina cried herself to death about a month after. Oh, poor lady just couldn't cope with any of it. Thomas still runs the dip, but nobody much goes there now. The whole area has kind of taken a negative dive. Since that night, other people have said that they've seen some really crazy things down on the river. I used to brush them off, but now, well, now I take notes. I know better than to ignore all the stories. And yet I also know well enough to leave them alone, too. As for that Jessie girl, no one has seen or heard from her since. She used to have a little place on the edge of the river. Well, 
it was not a surprise that no one can find the trailer anymore. Just a dirt lot where it used to be. Well, some say she moved. But being that close to the water, I just don't know. <sighs> I don't really have much else to tell you about that night. But I recommend that you keep your mind open for what can be out there. Owen, you try and get more out of my story than just a laugh at an old drunk. Farewell, friend. And remember, stay clear of the river. There are worse things than gators in those waters. Oh, one more thing. Pay the tab for me if you would. Well, my dear friends, I hope you enjoyed uh, good old Doc Creepin, <laughs> my, my southern U.S. alter ego. Yeah, he's uh, pretty good at telling stories as well. <laughs> no, sorry. Yeah, yeah, that was me, yeah, putting on that stupid American accent that I try sometimes. But I do so love it when you join me around the campfire. Don't you like it too? Yes, I know you do. Well, that's it for a while. I won't be trying that again until, um, well, I don't know. Well, I'll try it again sometime soon. But on Wednesday, I will be back with something very, very different. And I hope you're going to join me. You will, won't you? Go on, say you will. Yes, of course you will. Well, until then, sweet dreams and bye-bye. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook. Come chat with me on Twitter. Listen to the background music and download it if you like on SoundCloud. Drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt. And, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, Looking forward to seeing you all again real soon, so come check me out, okay? <laughs>